God is good all the time. Welcome and good morning to this holiday Sunday. And uh, like many holidays, you never know. Uh, sometimes you have a big crowd, sometimes you don't have any crowd, sometimes you just have the same crowd. But uh, glad you all could make it this morning. And uh, it's good to be here and come to worship the Lord. I have a couple of announcements to begin with. Uh, first of all, there will be an administrative board meeting uh, this Wednesday at 7 o'clock at the community building. And I think Connie had an announcement she wanted to share. Yes. Uh, if you do have a few minutes, you can stay with us after the church. We're going to have a school. We have a Sunday school. We have the opening. As normal, we're going to have the opening song. We have the pleasure. And, you know, it's over. Uh, any more announcements you might have. And next Sunday, we will be starting back with and I'm excited about that. So, um, Diane had thought that the little ones, you know, were not to the show about, you know, maybe, but I'm out there and I'm like, two little ones are really excited and thinking about coming back. It'll be good. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Good to have you back. Yeah, it's good to have you back. Yeah, we did. Yep. So let's begin with our call to worship. It comes from Psalm 86. Let's all stand as we join together in our call to worship. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Psalm 86, 1. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to worship you, we give you thanks, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your evident blessing on this nation as we come in freedom to to worship. We give you thanks that that we often take for granted, but we know so many of our brothers and sisters uh, aren't able to do that, and we give you thanks that you have appointed us to be here in this place, and especially on this day. We pray for those who can't be with us today for whatever reason, and we ask, Lord, that uh, you would uh, send our love out to them, and we just Lord, ask, Lord, that you would be the center of our worship today. Empower us to worship you in spirit and in truth, worthy of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, everybody wave to each other and the camera back there. Wave to the folks that are watching on YouTube, passing the peace. Our first song today is America, number 576. be seated. Should I share this now, Jeannie? Okay. 
I received a card <laughs> from Jeannie and, and Gary. There are people in our lives who are so generally kind-hearted. To the Mineral United Methodist Church, when I think of the kind-hearted people, I think of Mineral Church. Words can't express how grateful we are feeling. Thanks for the generous donations. Please put this back towards helping someone else. More than anything, we felt your prayers and felt truly blessed. Appreciating them that comes naturally. Thank you, love, Gary and Jeannie Patterson and families. Thank you. And that leads us into our time of prayer, joys, and concern. So uh, we can have a joy and, and that the Lord is... Uh, continues to heal and ask him for that continued healing uh, for Gary. And Butch as well, I guess, right? Is that... He's doing better, but it's just taking a while to get his face back. And, um, I want to talk about that, but I was oh, wondering about the <laughs> You have a voice. <laughs> but uh, they'll continue with the antibiotics and follow up with the doctor. Um, they said, too, we've gone to part of the any others that we need to lift up this morning? Well, Jeff, yeah. uh, I just think it's great that Jeannie and Jerry came walking in. Right. That, that's a real blessing. Absolutely. And uh, that I had an appointment Thursday with a surgeon again. This is a different person, and I have no idea what that's going to hold. But hopefully, at least they've taken me off of all my medicines, and that makes me feel better. Oh, good. Good. That's good. Any others? Jimmy, our Kelsey got along really well yeah. last Sunday. She, uh, the young lady, uh, offered her that a room her uh, bedroom was sharing the condo, mm -hmm. and she got to meet the mother of the young uh, girl. Well, we have one that called with Kelsey to find out the big one story, so <laughs> we don't know if Kelsey accepted her. Yeah, and that was a prayer and a concern that we had last week, and, and uh, you know, it, it was answered. It was, because it was kind of like a vetting process that they were, you know, and she was asked to to be a part of that, so uh, that, was, that was an answer to prayer. And, and I also, um, like people, what the folks prayer for my brother, Clarence, <laughs> his wife, and also back his son during this time. Yeah, they're all in that category of at risk, and uh, we went to see them yesterday, and and they are very concerned. Uh, any others? Well, Mary Gillen had um, a triple bypass when she came on sudden. Her family wasn't quite ready for that case, and she's doing really well for you to what Paul was posting on Facebook. Mary, you say? Yeah. Any others? If there are no others, as always, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you know, I him. <laughs> well, he's concerned that if he gets sick, he won't be able to have his surgery, and he really wants to have the surgery. So he's got a he. He's really a stickler for it. So we'll yeah. But have they scheduled a date for him yet? I believe so. I I can't tell you what it is. But yeah, and you know, um, contingent on his health, so that's why he's trying to. Jim, I also remember uh, my mom's neighbor is Brad Ellis. He was a teacher at Bloomfield, and his wife passed away mm. this week. And um, any others? Boy, we had fun last night. Yeah. We sat next to the. Yeah, it was a 
good time to come together and fellowship. Any others? As I say, as always, if you're welcome to come and join me here at the altar, if you'd like to raise these prayers or any that you have on your heart to the Lord, you're welcome to come. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you bless us so generously. We thank you, Lord, that you see us through the storm. We thank you, Lord, that we have assurance in you that no matter what happens, you have us in your hand. I give you thanks, Lord, that we see the evidence of your healing and grace on Gary and Butch. I ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless them in that process. We lift up May to you, Lord, as she goes to speak to a surgeon. Just guide him. May he receive your wisdom. We lift up uh, Mary to you as she recovers from uh, unexpected surgery. and We pray, Lord, that uh, she would continue to do well. And we pray your comfort for all those who surround her with love. We lift up Clarence and Louise and Zach and Daryl to you during this time that, of course, they're concerned. And we just pray, Lord, that they would know your comfort and your peace. And uh, as they look forward to the future, may they be assured of your presence and power. We lift up the Ellis family to you, Lord. As uh, they go through a time of loss, may they be assured by you. Surround them with your comfort and love and assurance as they go through this time. Lord, all these things we have lifted to you in voice, but we have prayers on our hearts, each one of us, known only to us, and Lord, you, you tell us to bring those to you. And so we do that now as we lift these uh, concerns to you in this moment of silence. Holy and Heavenly Father, we pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, thank you for your tithing, and we will observe that moment of, uh, of uh, spiritual discipline as we join together in our offertory verse Let's all stand as we join together.
us join together in our verse from Numbers 14. Wait, hang on just a second. <laughs> Let's join together. If the Lord is pleased with us, He will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Numbers 14, 8. And now the doxology. Heavenly Father, we do give you praise that you so generously pour out these gifts on us. We thank you, Lord, that you give us this opportunity to return a portion of that that you give us back to you. And we do so, Lord, with gracious and grateful hearts, faithful hearts, and humble hearts. We ask, Lord, that you would receive these gifts and that you would guide us through your Holy Spirit in the use of these funds that you so desire and design. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Our scripture today comes from the 11th chapter of Matthew, verses 25 through 30. And this is a kind of a twofold scripture uh, passage. There's a couple of things going on here, and I think you'll You'll notice that there's a shift here as, as we go through it. So, I know you just sat down, but I would ask you as you were able to stand for the reading of the gospel. <laughs> Matthew eleven twenty five. At that At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and on earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you are pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your word and for the word made flesh, our Lord Jesus. Today, Lord, as we look over these words and ponder them, help us to know what to take into our hearts and into our lives that you know that we need so that we can grow closer to you and serve you even more completely. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. So Jesus here at the first of this passage is basically what he's saying is God's ways are not the way of the world. And there is a wisdom of the world and there's a wisdom of God. In no way do I want to admit, uh, diminish the intelligence that God gives us. But what Jesus is saying is some people, through their intelligence, have forgotten God. We see this throughout the history of the human history, I mean, beginning with the Tower of Babel and Sodom and Gomorrah and on down through history. We see where the civilizations got to a point where they thought, well, we're smarter than God. We don't need God. And then they found out different. And sadly, I'm not sure if we're at, if we're at that point now in our civilization or not, but it seems like we're going, growing closer to that. You know, in, the, in movies and in media, uh, Christians are mocked. They're always, they are always the, kind of the dumb people, you know, these uh, people that don't know any better. And yet, as I say, if we look back in history, that's happened over and over and over again. And Jesus in this is saying, you know, I'm glad that people have humbled themselves, that they have given up 
the the world the wisdom that the world brings and seeing your wisdom you know it's it's about like when Jesus said unless you become like one of these children you will not enter the kingdom of God and what he's saying is you have to clear out all that other stuff and focus on God in order to gain a relationship with him now that doesn't mean I mean Jesus knows that we live in the world you know as we as the saying goes we live in the world but we're not of the world that we know that we have to live in this world and in this world, we share that love of Christ. And that's our place. We share the love and grace and the message of Christ. I want to share a couple of verses with you that point to this. 1 Corinthians uh, 1, 26-27, Paul is writing to the Corinthians. He says, Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Uh, not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Psalm 53, 1 and 2 says, The fool says in his heart there is no God. They are corrupt and their ways are vile and no one does good. God looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there was anyone who understands any who seek God. And so we see here that, uh, that difference. Those who seek God those who seek to understand God, and those who say there is no God. I am God. I'm the God of my life. By the way, you know, when that's happened and civilizations have followed that, that you know, and, and as we now see ours growing more and more away from God and towards a humanistic uh, authority, I just have one question. How's that working for you? You know, if we all practice what, what Jesus preached, if we all practice the respect and the love and the grace to one another, things might be a little different. Just saying. And we read in Acts 17, and I want to tell you about this. Paul goes to Athens, and when he goes to Athens in the 17th chapter of Acts, he sees all these idols because the Greeks are, have all these gods, Right? And he goes to a place called the Areopagus. The Areopagus, uh, the Romans later called it Mars Hill because they had different gods. So they had the god of Mars and they named it Mars Hill, who uh, later, you know, a candy bar was named after. But, <laughs> yeah, it's easier to say, too. But this place, this Areopagus, <laughs> was a place where philosophers and Stoics would come and they would philosophize and they would pontificate and they would talk about, you know, what about this and what about that and they would talk among each other. And they had an altar in this place that said, an altar to the unknown God. In other words, they knew there was a God. They just didn't know how to process it. They, they didn't know how to reach him. And Paul goes there and these are the most learned men in Greece that went to this place. Paul goes there and he says, you guys think you're smart, but let me tell you, God is not the unknown God. Let me tell you about the God that's known. And you can, like I said, read about this in, in the 17th chapter of Acts, but I wanted to share with you kind of how he, how he ends this. He says, therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. In other words, he goes and he preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ in the midst of this Areopagus, And that, that would be kind of like us going into the Senate and standing on the floor of the Senate and preaching the gospel. I mean, Paul is really bold in doing this. And it says at the end of this passage that some believed, but others scoffed at him. And I want to share just a little tidbit is uh, one of those who believed was named 
Dionysius. And interestingly enough, now at Mars Hill in Athens, there is a basilica of Dionysius. So evidently he was, uh, uh, you know, a founder of that church. But Paul is saying, you guys are the smartest people in Greece, but you don't know God. And God does not overlook this ignorance anymore because he sent his son. He sent his son to die on the cross. So nobody has an excuse after you hear the message. And this is where you need to turn. God is not unknown. God is the God of all creation. He is the God of salvation. He's the God of grace. He's the God of judgment. He's the God of truth. He's the God of love. And that's who you should know. You should know that that is the truth. Like I said, it says some believed, some didn't. But then Jesus shifts here. And he shifts from this, you know, we need to become like children. We need to uh, empty all the clutter of the world and, and focus on God and have that relationship with God. And then he shifts and he says, and when you do this, and, and you know, in so many words he says, when you do this, when this happens, when you accomplish this, then you can come to me. Come to me and lay your burdens down. Come to me. You know, there's a lot of scripture about God's comfort and protection. And uh, um, one of those, uh, you know, I, I picked out a couple here. Psalm 57, 1 and 2 says, says, Have mercy on me, my God, have mercy on me. For in you I take refuge. I, take, I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. I will cry out to God, most high, to God who vindicates me. You remember when Jesus is crossing the lake and the storm comes up and, and, you know, all the disciples are afraid and they go to him and they say, would you let us perish? And, you know, he gets up and he kind of wakes up and he says, you know, peace be still and the storm stops. And then he turns to them and he says, do you really think I'd let you die? I'm right here. We need to remember that Jesus is in the boat with us. Now here's a little interesting tidbit too. You may have heard, you know, in the in the in the in the church we have different names for different places like the vestibule and you know this and that. Well, do you know that this is the nave? The sanctuary is the nave. And the nave is a short for navy. It means we're in the boat. When we come in the sanctuary, we're in the boat. And we're in the boat together. We're not only in the boat together, but Jesus is in the boat with us. He may not uh, dispel every storm in our life, but he's in the boat with us. And he will calm the storm spiritually if we ask him. And that's why he's saying here, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke. In other words, he's saying, break off from the yoke that you're, that, that you're enslaved to by the world and take my yoke. It's almost a prophecy from Jeremiah 30, 8 through 9. Jeremiah says, in that day, which is the day of the Lord, declares the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke off their necks and will tear off their bonds and no longer will foreigners enslave them. Instead, they will serve the Lord their God. And so that's what Jesus is offering us, a breaking of the bonds, a, a, a dis, you know, a, a, an escape from the yoke that enslaves us to sin and fear and anxiety and trouble. That doesn't mean we won't have trouble and fear and anxiety in our lives, but we need to remember we can always turn to Jesus because through him, our eternal life is secure. Regardless of what happens. Now, we all want to live long and healthy lives here, right? But we have to remember that we have something beyond this through Jesus. We've got to remember that hope. We've got to live that hope. We've got to know that hope in our lives and demonstrate that hope.
In Galatians 4, Paul writes about our inheritance. And he writes about it in a context of slaves and masters. And he says, in verse 3, he says, you are enslaved, you were once enslaved under the basic principles of the world. In other words, fear, anxiety, guilt, sin. And then he says in 4-7 that you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir that you have an inheritance in the, in the eternal kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, amen. amen. That's good news. That's the best news. John two, uh, John, 1 John 2.17 says, The world and its desires will pass away, but those who do the will of the Lord will live forever. Praise be to God. So we come today, we come to the table, because not only does Jesus invite us to him to take our burdens and our troubles, but he invites us to his table. Now you know how things are acted. Things are a little differently these days, and we're doing things differently. So we're going to have communion through this. Has everybody got one of these cups? Now, these are a little tricky. I messed up the first time I tried one because I just grabbed it and peeled it off. But there's uh, two, they're out front if you need. Did, everybody got one? So there's two layers to peel off here. There's a cellophane layer on top, and that's where the, that's where the wafer is. So you want to go ahead and peel that back and have that ready. And then later, peel the other the, um, foil layer, and that's the juice. But we're going to join together now in our liturgy of communion. I'll just stand down here. Let us give thanks to the God who invites us to come to his table in love, repentance, and reconciliation. Thanks and praise be to God. We thank you, God of creation. You have given us the gift of life. You have blessed us with your presence. We thank you, God of covenant. Since your creation of the human being, you have watched over us through your promise to be our God. Even when we denied you, you loved us and waited patiently for us. We thank you, God of instruction. You have brought your word to us through the prophets of old, and your word made flesh, Jesus the Christ. We thank you, God of salvation. Through your work in Jesus Christ, we have the only opportunity to reconcile our sin and stand before you without blemish through the body broken and the blood shed of your Lamb. With all these blessings in our hearts and minds, we join all your saints living with us and with you in the praise that never ends. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory, honor, and power, for you created all things. We thank you, worthy Lord and God, you sent your holiness in the form of a man, Jesus Christ, fully God and fully human. Through his sacrifice on the cross, you brought to earth your grace and forgiveness once and for all, establishing a new covenant confirmed through your spirit and water. Hear us as we give praise to your lamb, our salvation. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength, and honor, and glory, and praise. We thank you, God, that on the night that he gave himself for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you,
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. After the supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as you drink it in remembrance of me. We thank you, God, as your people who remember these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ. In our thanksgiving, we offer ourselves as people who seek to live holy for you. We humbly and joyfully offer this in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit and ask that you would pour out your Spirit on this community gathered here and on these, your gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. Bless us through the outpouring of your Holy Spirit so that we may know the body broken and the blood shed for us through these gifts. That through the empowerment of your Holy Spirit, we would be the body of Christ to the world, united as one in your work until Lord Jesus Christ returns in victory and we join him at his banquet table in your heavenly realm. We pray this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in your Holy Spirit for all eternity. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> so take the cellophane, peel it back, and then take the wafer out. Everybody got that? The body of Christ broken for you. And then peel the oil back. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that on this day and this weekend when we remember your gift of liberty through us to us through our our governing and founding fathers. We give you thanks for your liberty through Jesus Christ. Your liberty and freedom from sin, from anxiety, from fear, from guilt, and from death. Praise be to you, Holy Father, Holy Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn today is Onward Christian Soldiers, number 205. Let's all stand as we join together.
as we do remember, especially this weekend, the freedom and the liberty that we have. And it's God-given. Believe me, if anyone tells you that the founders didn't believe that God did this, they're wrong. All you got to do is read their letters. All you got to do is read their documents. God gave us this freedom and this liberty and this nation. So go with that. Go with that gift of liberty and freedom, not only that he gave to our nation, but that he gives to each one of us. Know that you are free people. You are no longer slaves to fear. You are children of God. So go with that. Good news. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in the name of Jesus. Amen. And like I say, sit down and there's more coming. There's more to come than this thing.